At the beginning of May, a new machine learning architecture dropped and machine learning forums are all the buzz about it. And everyone is trying to figure out if this architecture works, how does it work? And is it better than say a typical neural network? On this channel, we have been building up to machine learning concepts from the definitions of Hilbert spaces. For the next couple of videos, we're going to take a diversion and we're going to talk about the Komolgorov Arnold network or CAN. We are going to go over the Komolgorov Arnold representation uh, from the 1960s and we'll look at the CON paper and then we'll see if we can throw together some simple examples for function approximation and give this method a test on some simple benchmarks. Today, let's talk about why you should care about this new method and how it might deliver on promises to conquer the curse of dimensionality, one of the principal bottlenecks for all of approximation theory. And also, with the neural network, we know that we can approximate any continuous function over a compact set uniformly. This is the universality property of neural networks, and it follows from the hahn bonnach theorem from functional analysis, which we will talk about in a future video. But the theory behind Kahn comes from a direct representation rather than an approximation. So let's start looking at this new approach with a can-do attitude. Did I really just say that? We have this thing we call the curse of dimensionality. Essentially what it says is that if it takes 10 basis functions to approximate a function well in one dimension, then two dimensions we need 100 basis functions, and in three dimensions we need 1000 basis functions. To achieve a good approximation in n dimensions, we would need, then need 10 to the n basis functions, which very quickly becomes intractable, especially when the dimensionality of the system gets huge. And 10 to the n weights takes a correspondingly long time to train. It, to put this in perspective, there are say 10 to the 21 one grains of sand on the planet Earth and 10 to the 78 atoms in the known universe. So if the weights we need to train scale at this rate, then there is no hope in getting a reasonable approximation of a function of high dimensions unless the system is like fundamentally sparse. Mathematicians saw that this was going to be a problem very early on. And the term the curse of dimensionality was first coined by Richard Bellman in 1957, and this was in relation to dynamic programming. So it's not like we don't deal with high dimensional problems in machine learning right now, uh, but we usually rely on things like sparsity. So we use things like stochastic gradient descent to train weights by only using a few at a time. And then we also have things like compressive sensing that tries to eliminate as many basis functions as possible to get a reduced order model of a system. But the way that the Kolmogorov Arnold representation handles this is a bit different. The Komogorov-Arnold network leverages the Komogorov-Arnold representation, which provides a representation for all continuous functions. The structure looks so close to neural networks that the machine learning community has debated the relevance of this theorem to neural networks for decades. Some declared that it's a super important theorem, and others explicitly said that it was irrelevant. If you look at the form of this representation side by side with the neural network, it becomes clear that there is some connection here. So why the doubt? It should also be noted that the Komogorov Arnold representation is actually stronger than universality. Universality is about getting a good approximation over a compact set, but the Komogorov Arnold representation is an explicit representation of a function. It's not an approximation. It is exact. So, I mean, that is good, right? But I haven't even told you the really good thing yet. Let's stay positive for a second and go back to 1900 when David Hilbert introduced his problems of the century. Uh, Hilbert's 13th he had a lot of problems, essentially asked if every high dimensional function could be represented as a sum of functions of two variables. Kolmogorov and Arnold showed that this is indeed possible and that the only true multivariate function is addition. Actually, it was a Vladimir Arnold that found this result and at the age of 19, while he was a student of Kolmogorov, Kolmogorov later published a refinement of Arnold's result. And um, then later, Lawrence simplified the Kolmogorov-Arnold representation by showing that you need only one activation function. Vladimir Arnold actually wrote one of my favorite uh, classical mechanics books. It's called Mathematical Methods in Classical Mechanics. I have it like right up on my bookshelf where I can see it. Uh, if you want a mathematician's take on classical mechanics and physics, I really highly recommend uh, taking a look at that book. It's a pleasure to read. So let's look at the inside. We have isolated each dimension of the independent variable, put them each individually into a function, and then we recombine them through addition. This means that if we can figure out how to find each one of these functions individually, we never have to go to higher dimensions. We can just do a whole bunch of one dimensional approximations. And so instead of needing 10 to the n basis functions, we only need n times 10. This is dramatically better. So why don't we just go ahead and try this out? What sort of 
issues might we actually run into? Well, neither the approach of Komogorov nor Arnold actually provided a constructive proof. Uh, worse yet, the functions that you need to compose with can often be fractal in nature and may generally be very scary functions. Uh, this is why the machine learning community largely turned its back on the representation in light of neural networks, where the interior functions are just piecewise linear, at least in the case of the ReLU activation functions, and easier to handle. The authors of the CAN paper felt that with all of the advancements in deep neural networks, that it was time to readdress the CAN structure. Uh, to this end, they are replacing the ReLU activation functions with unknown continuous functions, and specifically splines. Splines can achieve a uniformly good approximation of continuous functions, so that makes them a natural choice for estimation here. The idea is that with modern training methods such as backpropagation, we can find the parameters for these splines and get decent approximations of each one of these one-dimensional functions. Now, is this good enough? Uh, we know that the function inside the activation function obtained from the Ka representation can, say, be fractal in nature, and piecewise polynomials hardly qualify as fractal functions. So, could we actually approximate every function using this method? Well, the author of CAN seemed to think so, and they also take this construction further by adding more layers. They actually conjecture that in the paper that the addition of layers might renew, remove the need for any sort of pathological functions in the approximation. However, that theory must be worked out further. So that's the background on CAN. Uh, over the next several videos, we're going to go over the proof of the Kolmogorov arnold representation, work on coding up the CAN algorithm on our own, and well, we'll give it a test. Now, this is all part of my theory of machine learning series on this channel. And if you'd like to follow along, you know, please subscribe. I want to thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you found it helpful. And well, I hope you have a great day.